Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So this is definitely not a video that I can say I've ever really made before, and we're gonna be talking about a ton of brushes today. I realized that recently I have accumulated quite a few new brushes, like it's a bit of a problem. I kind of didn't realize that I was exclusively ordering brushes all of the time, and then my various orders from different art supply stores and stuff sort of all arrived in the same week, and I realized that I had like an entire new collection of brushes. Although in my defense, these are for like five different mediums and projects and stuff. So I have way more brushes here than I would possibly normally accumulate. I definitely have not bought brushes in a long time and brushes are one of those things that are very important and I feel like very under talked about and appreciated. You know, everyone wants to talk about the paint and the more exciting things, but brushes are super important materials and they are more of an investment. You know, your brush is going to last you for a very long time if you take good care of it, depending on what you're doing with it. Yeah, I'm very excited about these new additions, so I guess let's get into talking about them. Like I sort of mentioned in the beginning, these are for like pretty much every type of paint medium. I was going after specifically a few brushes for the oil painting that I want to start working on. There are a few very particular shaped brushes that sounded like it would be something I would really enjoy using for the oil paint project that I want to do very soon. I promise it's going to happen. I know I've been talking about it for weeks, but because of that I have been watching quite a few oil painters work and there were some more unusual brush types that I had never really thought of buying or using that just seemed like the one that I would want to buy and use, so picked up those and you will see as we get into this just the various brushes. I have no clue how to go about this. I guess we will start with this giant pack of ones. I These are from Aldeceres, I think, and that's why they are bundled together. There are some brush sets, but I did a bunch of open stock ones as well. And I know because most of my audience is not Canadian, Deceres is like Canadian Blick, sort of. It's just an art supply store that we have here. And they have a lot of really interesting brush brands that Curry's, which is another Canadian art supply store, doesn't have. And so I did order things from Curry's as well, and I kind of balanced the two out with the various types. You know, one place sells one type of brush and the other sells a different one. But yeah, this pack of brushes has quite a few different kinds. So the first ones I believe are all of the same type. They have the same type of handle. Yeah. It's been a while since I've ordered a lot of these, so excuse my possible not entirely remembering what and or why I bought them for. These ones I feel like are pretty self-explanatory though. They are these long handled like hog bristle type brush that I definitely will be using for oil painting. They are that pretty, you know, stiff type of classic oil painting brush. And I believe all of these are filberts. This one looks a little more pointed, but I think that's just like the samphorizing in the brush. These appear to all be the same type of brush just in different sizes. When I did my little oil painting test just to get the feel of the oil paint, I did exclusively use a filbert brush, which is something I like never use in watercolor, and so it isn't really a brush that I'd ever considered using, but it worked out really well and I really enjoyed using it, and so I figured that filbert brushes might be a brush that I tend to gravitate towards more for oil painting and acrylic. Not necessarily applicable for these particular brushes, but, but that's I mean, like the different mediums, I prefer using different shaped brushes, which I'd never really considered. And so that's also what a lot of this brush haul is. Along the same similar line as those in that little brush thing are these ones, which are Desaire's own brand of synthetic. They look hog-like too. They're a little softer, but they look like a more intense bristled synthetic brush. Also a filbert, although they are significantly smaller. Here's the smallest one from the other round. The sizing is completely different. This one says it is a 10 and this one says it is a 4, so they look about the same size, although you can see the bristles are significantly longer on the one. These ones are much less stiff, so I could see myself using these for acrylic as well. This one's a slightly more unusual one left in that that pack. It is an angled brush. I'm pretty sure this is just considered an angled uh, brush that is that stiffer hog type bristle. And again, angled brushes and dagger brushes, which kind of look like angled brushes, but you will see the difference in a second. They're another type of brush that I have never in my entire life used or even considered using for my typical painting setup. But listening and watching various oil painters completely sold me on that is probably going to be the brush that I prefer 
because you of course have the option to swipe you know broad way to get larger strokes but if you swipe you know downward on the angle you have much more precision and it just seemed like it would be a very useful brush that I'm probably going to enjoy using for oil painting. And of course, because I'd never considered it, I had none <laughs> at all in my studio. So I did end up picking up quite a few different types of angled and dagger brushes, which speaking of dagger brushes, let me grab some out of here. So these are some various Royal and Langnickel brushes, which they are angled. And I don't know if they're all considered dagger brushes because I'm going to show you something different between some of these in a second. So I know they all they all look like the same type of brush. The two on the left are the exact same type just in different sizes and the two on the right are the same type of brush in different sizes. But if we take the two in the middle here, you can see that this one is like your typical dagger angled brush where it has the brush hairs compressed like into the ferrule like straight just you know typical ferrule you know, flat brush. Whereas this one's ferrule is angled to be a triangle. So the base is thicker than the point. I hope this makes sense. So the ferrule on this one's actually a triangle and the ferrule on this one is your typical like flat crimped ferrule. And I feel like this triangular brush could make some really interesting brush marks. And the last brushes in that brush bundle are these Zen Royal and Langnickel brushes. Again, they're this sort of like in-between synthetic that I can really use for whatever project I want, which is why I was gravitating towards a lot of these as well. So if I want to use them for oil, they're going to be a little softer, which isn't going to leave those super intense, you know, gloopy brush marks, which is sometimes what you want but if I want to use these for like acrylic or gouache or something they're also going to work really well. I also picked up this set of Winsor Newton flat brushes. They are specifically, more specifically, short flat bright brushes which I believe means the bristles are slightly shorter than on some other flat brushes. Long handled brushes are really just not it for filming. <laughs> And again, those are more specifically for oil painting as they are that stiffer hog type bristle. And I believe the last thing that I picked up from Desserts was this set of Nobel brushes, which from what I have been able to tell is kind of like a Desserts, I don't know if it's exclusive, but anytime that I've mentioned Nobel products, they seem to be really hard to get outside of Canada. So I'm not entirely sure how easy, but it's kind of just, you know, basic, synthetic brushes in this set that had a few more interesting shaped ones and I have quite a few Nobel brushes and these like white synthetic ones are always really nice. They hold up well. The bristles are like not too stiff and not too flimsy. They're just kind of like a really nice in-between brush. As far as other sets go, because I'm not entirely sure where I picked these up from, so this is gonna be the segue. These I think are just like random Amazon ones. They are these script liner brushes, just really long ones. I do enjoy a good script brush for watercolor and acrylic and I just wanted to pick a few more up because a lot of the time they do end up fraying out and that's a problem when you're trying to line with it and do really specific detail work in a watercolor or gouache or whatever. And so just picked up this cheap set that has a ton of different sizes and stuff. And I know these were not very expensive. And so if they like die on me in a couple of uses, that's not gonna be a big deal. And then I picked up this set of incredibly small detail brushes. I honestly don't know if you're gonna be able to see any of the actual brush you know, hairs themselves, considering how small they are. Um, and these are going to be definitely multi-purpose in my studio. They are, again, that sort of synthetic in-between brush, which is really useful because I would absolutely use these for details on, like, watercolor paintings because the Brussels the bristles. Because the bristles tend to hold up and work pretty well with watercolor, but I'd also use these for any sort of prop making details and like statue painting. So they're going to be a lot of different things in my studio and personal use. The next set of brushes that I picked up is when I was getting like really deep into brush research and just looking at a ton of different types of brushes. And for some reason, these came up. And this is this specific, very specific set of 
of Zen Royal and Lionical brushes, which I don't actually think I own any Zen brushes outside of the ones that I've just recently, you know, picked up in this sort of haul. But I know a lot of you have recommended I try them out in various comment sections on videos. So I've heard a lot of good things and I'm very excited to test these out. But this particular set really got me because they are specifically these watercolor scrubber brushes. So they are these pretty, I feel like, unique. I can't say I've really seen watercolor brushes like this or they're just not very common for brush sets. They are these like shorter filbert brushes that are like really densely packed and the purpose is to be able to lift paint off of you know your painting so if you want to lift any watercolor paint out of your painting and they just sounded really cool and really useful it is something that I do semi-frequently sometimes it's just to blend sometimes it really is to lift color out and I have where is it these Royal Lang Nickel soft grip ones that tend to be my lifting brushes because they are a little stiffer and more dense and they're pretty cheap so I don't feel terrible about like <laughs> destroying the brush essentially because when you are scrubbing out a piece of paper you are going to start fraying ends and they're not going to look the greatest after a while. Yeah I'm very excited to try these out because I feel like they're probably going to do possibly a better job than what I'm currently using and it is something that I do pretty frequently in my work. The other more watercolor brush set which I really wasn't planning on looking at watercolor brushes too much because like I mentioned I have my favorites but buying all of these different types Types and shapes of different brushes really got me thinking and interested in trying out some more unique shapes just to like branch out and try some new things, see how it goes. And so I wanted a really big flat brush, like what is this called? A Mottler brush? A Mottler brush. So like something that looks like you would normally paint a wall with or something, but it has watercolor more specific bristles because I really do not have something like that and I just think it could make really interesting brush strokes and so that was like the first thing and I did in my research find out that Princeton makes in their Neptune range which I have a ton of brushes and I really love them they made a couple of different sizes but I ended up finding this set which they are the Princeton Aqua Elite and they are synthetic Kalinsky sable brushes and in this set you can see it has a nicely decently sized you can see compared to my hand Mottler brush as well as this brush I thought was super interesting it is called a three-quarter oval wash but it has this really fine point in the center which I'm not sure how much of that's gonna come out once the like samphorizing and like you know the stuff that's holding all the bristles together comes out but that brush also really intrigued me and I was not gonna be mad about having a couple of different types of round brush and so this set wasn't that bad price wise especially because Mottler brushes because they are significantly bigger tend to be on the more expensive side and so I decided to pick this up and try it out instead of just buying the individual brushes. Now these ones are by far I would say the most unusual brushes that I picked up. They are technically meant for wax or chalk paint that is this set of two because I was trying to find a brush that very specifically looked like this one. These I believe from various research are normally called pointed sash brushes but they have those like stiff hog-like bristle brushes and I saw someone using a brush that was like this to make like very interesting brush strokes on a painting and I just thought it looked really cool and so I was trying to find a brush like this and they're not very easy to find. The easiest ones that I could find were the ones that were made more for chalk and wax paint and then just more specifically in a shape that was like this and so the set are a couple that look pretty similar. This one is a little more densely packed bristle wise like this one has a little more give and is also pointed and this one is more flat and more densely packed I feel like but I think they both could make really interesting brush strokes although this might be absolutely incredible for prop painting for me because of the denseness of the brush so that I'm also excited about using. You can probably tell that I use my brushes for like 
crazy polar opposite projects all of the time. And the last group of brushes is another open stock collection from Curry's. This time I'm going to get them out of this very interesting plastic wrapped cardboard thing. I will say, I mean, this did keep them very, you know, pristine in the package and stuff. So I do appreciate the effort there. This is actually not all of the brushes that I ordered from Curry's, but I'm waiting on the other set and I don't know when that's going to come. So I figured might as well film this video now. So the ones that I am waiting on are a lot more of the these Princeton Select brushes. These ones in particular I was very interested in, like the brush line in general, because they're overall a pretty like, again, neutral synthetic brush that I could find a lot of use for in my work, because I can use them for watercolor gouache, acrylic wash, acrylic, all of that fun stuff, very versatile brushes. Um, and they also come in a lot of really interesting types and unusual sizes. This one is a like script liner brush, and this is, I believe, just called an angled. It's a dagger, what does that say? This one is specifically called a dagger striper, but it is like an angled type of brush. But I did go through and order I definitely ordered the pointed filbert brushes because they were absolutely more unique and a couple of other like very specific types of um, brushes that I thought might be really interesting to have. They also aren't that expensive, which is great. Speaking of, since I know I mentioned the Princeton Neptune brushes, I got some, again, more unusual shapes. I have I don't know if I have an entire set of round brushes. The Princeton Neptune brushes were the watercolor brushes that I first sort of invested in when I got really into watercolor. I feel like they're a good entryway when you maybe want to look at buying something a little more high quality that you know is going to last for a long time. I'm pretty sure all of my um, Neptune brushes are like my original ones that I've probably had for like 10 years now and I don't think any of them have any real wear and tear on them which is amazing. They were for a long time what I used pretty much exclusively for my work. They're great brushes so I was very happy to you know without even seeing these in person buy them because I know I really like the brush line and the makeup of the synthetic hairs and so I ended up picking up two sizes of dagger brush and then this oval wash is what it's called. So this one is significantly smaller than the one in the set and again it has that point that I'm not entirely sure if it's going to last once the samphorizing is out of the brush. But of course again this was because I was looking at more unique types of watercolor brush just to you know make some more interesting brush strokes or break out of the typical looking things and see if that looks interesting in work. And the last group of brushes, again the same line, are these Princeton Catalyst brushes, which I wasn't really sure about, but I was reading on Curry's the like description of the brush, and they intrigued me, so I picked up a few. These are, what are these? There is a, this one in the middle is considered a short filbert, and then the other two are normal filberts, so the short filbert bristles are just a little shorter, <laughs> as the name would suggest, but specifically the Catalyst brush line is meant to have more densely packed synthetic fibers, which these absolutely are. These ones still have like their samphorizing like really on them, so like that's not gonna happen too well. This one feels a little more broken up and natural, but I can just tell from this, it's a pretty stiff brush. Like physically, the hairs are like that more soft synthetic feel, but it is like a stiff, stiff brush. So I think these are going to be really interesting to try out and I would definitely consider possibly buying more of them just because of that extra stiffness that sometimes you want in a brush, but then it's interesting because the physical hairs are still that nice synthetic soft type. Yeah, these are very interesting brush that I'm excited to see what it actually looks like in my work. And those are all the brushes that I picked up. I know that was quite extensive, so thank you if you made it this far into the video. I'm sure you will end up seeing a lot of these in upcoming videos, but if there is any particular brush type or whatever that you would like to see a specific video on, just let me know in the comment section. But that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.